Hello students, welcome back. Let us take a look at the final section of your chapter 13, Surface Areas and Volumes, uh, the summary. So this summary is going to be uh, slightly, uh, uh, not theoretical, but more about formulas. Now this chapter, as you can see from the title itself, it's divided into two major sections. One is surface areas and the other is volumes. And which is why I have divided this board as well into two sections, surface areas and volumes. So we are going to take a look at the surface areas of the different objects that we learned and their volumes as well. So first of all, cuboid. Cuboid is nothing but a rectangular box. We learnt about the total surface area and uh, the, to, uh, the areas of the walls. So first of all, it has a rectangular cuboid. It has three dimensions. What are they? Length, breadth and height. So what is the formula going to be for the total surface area? It is going to be 2 length into breadth plus breadth into height plus length into height. So why 2? into length into breadth plus breadth into height plus length into height. There are six faces. So let's say this is your rectangular cuboid. This is your rectangular cuboid. So a face like this, first of all, let's mark the dimensions. This is the length. This is the breadth. And this is the height. Correct? So for a face like this out here, there are two faces, one in the front and one at the back. So this would be what? Length into height. So twice length into height. Similarly, for a face like this, you have breadth into height. So two of these. And similarly, at the bottom, you have length into breadth. So two length into breadth plus breadth into height plus length into height. And the four walls, the four walls will be minus this area and this area at the base. So this area at the top is cut out and this area at the base is cut out. So what are we left with? We are left with two front faces and two side faces. That would make up the four walls. So uh, what dimensions are getting cut out? The length into breadth. So this is going to be 2 LH plus BH. So I think this chalk is not clear. I am going to go with the regular chalk. So 2 LH plus BH. Now for a cube, a cube is nothing but it is a box just like your rectangular cuboid with the exception that all the edges are equal in length. So it's made up of square pieces of edges. So all the sides, each of these sides, they are congruent to each other. So now there are six faces, so six areas of a square, area of a square is side square, so six, of, uh, six into side square, so the total surface area is going to be six side square. Similarly, for walls, we are cutting out the top and the base. So there will be four side squares. Simple. Moving on to cylinder. So cylinder, suppose this is your right circular cylinder. You have dimensions height and base radius. And the formula, see, first of all, we have total surface area and curved surface area. So the total surface area is going to be this entire curved region plus the area of the base and top, base and top, right? So this is the total surface area is given by 2 pi r into r plus h. Whereas the curved surface area is only going to be this curved portion. It, is, uh, it could be something like a hollow pipe. So the top portion and the bottom portion is not considered. So this is 2 pi r h. Cone. Cone. Let's draw a cone. What do we have? We have three dimensions. One is the base radius. So a cone could be this way or it could be turned upside down. It's the same thing, okay? So this is the radius from here to here or here to here. You have the perpendicular height h and the slanting height l. Okay, so the curved surface area is going to be just this region. For example, if you're uh, just uh, making a tent, so the tent, you won't really include a cloth at the base. In such cases, you need to find the area of cloth required. So you're going to calculate the curved surface area. So the curved surface area is given by pi r l. And the total surface area would be something covering at the bottom also. So total surface area is given by pi r into r plus l. So r is for radius, l is for uh, the sloping length. So if you notice, we are just using R, L, L, R, R and L. How about this perpendicular height edge? See, sometimes what happens is that you're given with the perpendicular height. 
So what you can do, you know, you need to always find L. How would you find L? If you notice, this is a right angled triangle. This region out here is a right angled triangle. So using Pythagoras theorem, you're going to find out this length and then substitute in the formula to find the curved surface area, total surface area. And you would get similar, term, uh, similar sums like those. Now a sphere has uh, the curved surface area and total surface area is the same. So that's why I haven't really written curved surface area, total surface area. Here are the there are many circles, so just there are many spheres uh, which are made up of circles, right? So they have a common radius. So the dimension is also r. The total surface area of sphere is given by 4 pi r square. Now a hemisphere is something is that when you have a sphere that's three dimensional, it could be a ball like thing. It's not really a circle, it's a solid object, right? When you cut this section out, you get a hemisphere. So a hemisphere, if you notice, it has a curved surface area, which would only be the circular region. And you have the total surface area, which would be the sum of this region plus this region. So the curved surface area is given by, the total surface area is given by 3 pi r square, whereas the curved surface area is given by 2 pi r square. So why 3 pi r square and 2 pi r square? See, curves, uh, in the curved surface area, what happens is you're just taking half of the area of the sphere, right? The total surface area of the sphere. But how about this 3 pi r square? In 3 pi r square, you're taking the curved surface area and the area of the base, right? So the area at the base, it has the same radius r as this radius. So the area of the base is going to be area of circle, which is pi r square. So 2 pi r square plus pi r square is going to be 3 pi r square, right? So this is curved surface area and this is total surface area of hemisphere. Now volume, volume is given uh, different, different terms, capacity, how much liquid can a utensil contain. So it is nothing but uh, the amount of uh, solid liquid or gas that any empty object can contain or even if it's a, a solid object and not empty, then an amount of space that it occupies in space. So for a cuboid, we are going to use its dimensions, which is length into breadth into height. So LBH. For cube, all the dimensions are the same. Let's say if it is L, uh, L is going to be B, uh, equal to B, which is going to be equal to S. So I'm just taking a common term that is uh, S for side. This is going to be side cube because it would be s into s into s, so side cube. Cylinder, it is going to be pi r square h. Cone, it is going to be one third of cylinder, so one upon three pi r square h. We learnt that earlier in one of the examples that if you take a cone and cylinder of the same height, and if you fill this, if you take this cone upside down and you fill it with sand until the brim and you fill this, uh, keep filling it, the cylinder with the sand, the cylinder will get completely filled in three instances. That means that the volume of cone is one upon three, the volume of cylinder which is one upon three pi r square h. Then we have volume of sphere which is four upon three pi r cube and hemisphere is obviously going to be half that of sphere. So this is going to be 2 upon 3 pi r cube. So this was all about the summary of chapter 13, surface areas and volumes. I hope you enjoyed doing this chapter. Thank you. Hope this video increased your knowledge. For more such videos and a completely free educational content, log on to www.epathshala.org or visit our epathshala YouTube channel. We have each and every question solved for maths, physics, chemistry and biology. So subscribe our channel, share with your friends, like our Facebook page and follow our Twitter handle for regular updates and important educational tips and also win ePartshala goodies. So what are you waiting for? Subscribe this channel and enjoy the freedom of education.